Releasing today on various digital platforms is uh, a fun Christmas film, a film called Stuffings. And it's my great pleasure to be speaking to the writer director of the film Stuffings, Matthew J. Wilkinson. Matthew, welcome to Movie Metropolis. Thank you. Thank you for having me. <laughs> this is such a, a, a daffy sort of film, which I quite enjoyed. <laughs> what, what, <laughs> what was the uh, inspiration behind it? <laughs> Uh, well, I guess, I guess I sort of had three bits of inspiration. The first was just that I had not made a film in a long time and I really wanted to make one. Uh, and obviously a pandemic came along and it, it, you sort of sat there thinking, what am I going to do with myself? How can I pull something off? So I found myself sort of watching a lot of YouTube videos during, during COVID and a, a lot of that repetition of sort of seeing how how a lot of YouTubers sort of have this format. They don't really realize they've got this sort of scripted format in front of them that they're kind of all working off of. And I sort of thought, I'm going to, I'm going to play on that. Um, so watching a lot of YouTube was definitely an inspiration, just wanting to make something after such a long time. And, um, and then here in the Adelaide Hills, people put up these weird Santa statues each uh, Christmas. And about two years ago, one of them just, scared the hell out of me as I was driving my car through the hills and I just thought that's creepy there's something there's something in that I've got to put that in there somewhere so it was kind of those combination of elements that 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 made stuffings what it is <laughs> so this is a, a, a quite an interesting horror film uh, with comedy um, perspectives to it so tell me about writing the script so that uh, you're able to incorporate these two people with their um, social media, finding this horrifying uh, lot of Santas, <laughs> stuffed Santas <laughs> in, in, in Adelaide. Yeah, well, I, I think, I mean, I'm, I, I particularly always feel that the script is, is the key, particularly when you've got no budget. If, if, you've, if you're really working with no money whatsoever, um, I'm always making sure then that the script is as, is as fun as it can be because you, people will sort of forgive you a bit more if, if they're having a good time. And I think that's the thing with, with a no budget film is you just got to keep people entertained at that level. Um, and I think the social media thing was great because again, if you've got no money, you can have them talking off GoPros, off phones. It, it, it becomes part of the world of the, of, of the movie. So that was a really, from, from a writing perspective, that was a great way to sort of make the film with nothing and, and make it look like it's, it's justifiable. Um, but also the characters, I think, I think you've got to have like really good characters. And really, again, I took, I watched a lot of YouTube YouTubers and I sort of looked at their personalities and what they were sort of doing. And I think the question that, that I raised was what happens when the camera cuts? Like when are they really themselves? And, and that's the thing when we watch, people on YouTube it's kind of like okay that's them but is it really them or what happens when you press the stop button and I wanted to kind of explore that with these two characters that I thought well, you know let's go down the path that, that this is a couple that they got their fame by being a couple um, what happens when the camera is not rolling and then let's put them in a situation like a horror film sort of setting where uh, you, you know let, let's let it go loose and, and see what happens so it's kind of it's kind of two films in a way. It's sort of it is it's kind of looking at the the social media element of of everything. But then there's also a horror film there, which is a bit more like um, I guess I was influenced by films like Gremlins and Halloween, Friday the Thirteenth. Uh, those kind of movies really, you know, I grew up on eighties B grade movies, so that's really what I wanted to do. So so it's kind of just mashing the two together. Okay, very good. Now, Adelaide, I, I, for me, has a, a bit of renown because of Snowtown and so on. There seems to be a, a, a lovely place to, uh, to have lots of gory uh, murders and, and so on. <laughs> so uh, tell me about the, uh, the gore and about the horror and about these nasty Santas and how that, um, <laughs> that sort of weird uh, sort of storyline that you concocted about the um, uh, days leading up to Christmas was uh, really quite intriguing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I, I think the thing was, obviously, again, here in the Adelaide Hills, every year people put out these sort of bizarre scarecrow looking Santas and they're not 
pretty. I have to admit, when you drive around here, they are kind of creepy. Um, and I, 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 I kind of looked at that and then I, I sort of started thinking of films where, because the Adelaide Hills is quite pretty too. It's a very pretty sort of place. And it made me think of those movies a bit like, uh, like Hot Fuzz is a good example where, you know, you've got the sleepy little town, but there's a sinister backstory going on with a bit of a cult uh, or the Wicker Man. And, and, and it's kind of like, okay, I'm going to use that setting of, of there's a beautiful place there's this weird sort of tradition going on, but what's what's the meaning behind that weird tradition? What are they protecting or what are they hiding? Uh, and so that's really where stuffings came from. And I sort of thought if, if because the Adelaide Hills sort of circulate around the Adelaide CBD, perhaps they're protecting something from getting into the city. Um, and so that's where sort of stuffings, I, I guess, sort of came from. Um, I, I think also just... I don't know, like I, I wasn't really out to make a Christmas movie. I have to admit, I'm not, I'm not really the biggest fan of Christmas movies, but um, it, it just worked. It, it just like everything was sitting right in front of me. So I, I felt like I had to do it <laughs> in anything. And the gore, I mean, it's, I think I try to always sort of, as much as I would call this a comedy horror, I think you still need a few surprise moments. You still need a few moments where you, you, uh, you kind of go over the top a little bit with it. There's no doubt that, you know, the, the effects we have in this movie are kind of just a bit over the top, but I like to keep it practical too. I don't, I'm not a computer CGI fan. So I think it's more fun when it's practical. <laughs> <laughs> and the title is, is uh, I think, quite clever. <laughs> uh, talk about getting stuffed, so to speak, <laughs> stuffings. <laughs> Yeah, and that the title was a hard one to come by. Actually, we we had a huge discussion about what we were going to call the movie, and um, I, I wanted something like you know I, I think the best titles are the ones where it's like one word, like a Jaws or a Gremlins. You know exactly what you're going to get. So stuffings to me was like obviously there's Christmas stuffing, and they look like you know they they're all weird and filled with stuffings inside of them. So yeah, stuffings was. It, 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 I I just went. That's what I'm. I want, and everyone had to agree with it. <laughs> so, yeah, <Works> for me. <laughs> okay. <laughs> now tell me about your cast. I don't necessarily recognise any of the actors, but uh, how did you find the various uh, actors? Uh, just just the sort of you know the online casting websites and um, some of the Adelaide Facebook pages. Um, I I was sort of particularly with Beck and Andy with Daniel and. Um, uh, Kathleen when what I did is I auditioned for couples I wanted to try and get two people that actually knew each other because I felt like they'd have better chemistry and uh, Daniel and Kat they were one of the first people to audition and I I the moment I saw them I said well that's it that's that's my Beck and Andy so so getting the leads was was quite easy the side characters was a little a little bit harder but um uh, no, it was it was actually a very smooth audition process, actually. And we were all strangers. I didn't I didn't know anyone. I think there's there's only one or two people in the whole film that I've worked with before. And there's a couple of family members in there too. But yeah, most people were were, were strangers to me. Okay, so tell me about the shoot. How long did it take? And any of the challenges that you faced uh, in this low budget film? Because you uh, obviously uh, directed it very carefully. <laughs> Yeah, well, we filmed uh, a bit over two weeks and we sort of broke it up between prior to Christmas and then we did after Christmas in January. Um, we uh, we almost got, the, we had a couple of COVID cases that obviously almost stopped us in our tracks and that was, we were very lucky actually. We sort of just missed when, you know, state governments wanted to start shutting everyone inside. Um we uh, we didn't have any. I have to admit, it was a very smooth shoot. Um, I think I think I obviously because I sort of in my head knew that I didn't have a lot to work with. I was very much planning out how to just sort of cheat things or get away with things as best as possible. Um, we uh, we did have the the Cherry Gardens bushfire came through very close. Um, and there's a shot of it in the actual film towards the end of the movie when when the farmer looks up at the sky and it's dark. It's it's not a cloud. It's actually a smoke cloud yeah. from the Cherry Gardens bushfire coming over top. 
and I and I got a shot of it. I thought that's great. I'm going to put that in the movie. But we almost had to evacuate at one point, um, and that could have stopped kind of the the second half of the shoot. But luckily, that fire got they got that under control. So that was probably the the biggest sort of scary moment. Um, but otherwise, it was it was actually a very smooth shoot. I have to admit. Besides that, in a pandemic, um, everyone was really lovely to get along with everyone chipped in because I, I was really just one man with a camera and um and you know everyone sort of helped do the special effects and it was really good because again no one knew knew anyone so it, it was um it was really good to just see everyone pitch in and just say let's get it done so I, I think considering it had been a long time since I'd, I'd made a film it was a really nice reminder that I could do it and and I could make new friends in the process. <laughs> Very good. So on that, uh, with locations that you used, um, tell me about that and, uh, uh, and I suppose your process, because uh, I, I gather you used a single camera for the, for the, for the shoot. Yeah, um, I hired a camera um, for pretty much yeah, the whole shoot, but then obviously there's, there's GoPro footage in there and some phone mm -hmm. footage in there at, at particular points. Um, uh, so, um, the process, I suppose, was, um, I, I obviously sort of just broke it up into, to chunks of like at, at any one time, there was probably no more than, you know, four or five people on actual, on the actual set. Um, and the locations were really just here in the Adelaide Hills with just, um, like I, I live in the Adelaide Hills. So I, uh, I basically just approached neighbors and said, can I shoot on your property? And uh, yeah, they all, they all, they didn't quite know what I was doing. <laughs> and I still think they don't quite know what the film is, but, but they all agreed to it. So there wasn't an issue there. Um, yeah. I, a couple, a couple of neighbors are actually in the film too. They have very, those sort of small cameo moments. So there, there are a couple of neighbors actually in the movie. Um, but uh, yeah, a lot of them, <laughs> a lot of them are like, what are you doing? So yeah, it was, it was good. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, tell me about the music that's in the film, which I found uh, quite interesting. Yeah, um, the music was uh, done by a friend of mine called uh, Dave, Dave Saunders. Um, he basically did the majority of it himself. Um, he, in actual fact, that the post-production was the longest part. We we had, um, we, I have to admit, like the film does have some audio issues that we were just trying to fix. And that's because we didn't have a dedicated sound recordist. And, and so that was, that was a tough job to try and solve as much of the audio as possible. Um, and that took a lot of post-production time, but Dave uh, sat there basically with me and he would put the soundtrack together. Uh, and yeah, he, he just like, I don't know. He's just a really talented guy who who knows how to make a beats, and I've got no. I don't know how to play a guitar, let alone any. You know, do what he does. So, um, no, Dave. Dave did a great job, and um, yeah, I think he was. He hadn't done anything in years too. I think that was the thing. We we both sort of said, "Look, you you haven't done anything. I haven't done anything. Let's sit down and and put this thing together." So, no, he he was a, a real champ, and um, yeah, I couldn't have done it without Dave. Okay. Now, it, uh, Bounty Films have uh, picked up the film and it's uh, being released on various digital platforms. That uh, must have really pleased you that the film is able to be out there. Oh, absolutely. Um, I mean, I'm always sort of in awe and, um, you know, I'm, I'm never someone who uh, you, you just sort of, I guess you, you're rolling the dice and just sort of seeing what happens when you, when you, when you throw your film out there into the mix. Um, I, I, I just hope, I suppose, that, uh, again, I, I, I tend to make films that are obviously very sort of B-gradey, um, but I always try to go for fun. You know, I think that's the thing is, is fun, and, and I always sort of try and call my films beer and popcorn movies more than anything. Um, so I guess it's, it's I'm, I'm hoping that, the, you know, the way Bounty's looking at it too is, is in that same uh, vein is is that look here's just a really b grade movie and if you want to just sit down and have some fun with it then hopefully that's the way people will take it and uh um as much as i love horror you know i'm not the kind of person that that really 
and I've done kind of a couple of serious things, but the, the, the B grade stuff is, is the more fun stuff. It's the more memorable stuff. You know, when you think of you Friday the 13th again or, or Gremlins, those are films that you're really happy to relive, whereas opposed to the more, if it's a really dark and gritty and it's, it's kind of sadistic, it's kind of very hard to rewatch those ones. So I, I tend to try to, as much as I, I like some gore and I like some jumps and all that, I do like it to be fun too. So I'm, I'm, I'm really stoked with the, with the release and uh, yeah, I hope, I hope uh, it gets around and people see it. Absolutely. It's, it's a, a very uh, um, uh, fun uh, Christmas movie. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> I, I must ask you, Matthew, I, I read your uh, filmography and I noticed you've made such films as Nullarbor Nymph and um, um, uh, Colourful and Impossible. Uh, um, don't show mother uh, i think mm -hmm. I saw. and also a film called how not to make a horror film <laughs> mm. tell me about your, your the way you choose uh, what you make uh, films about well, well how not to make a horror film is 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 literally if you watch that that shows my whole beginnings into this industry um i was 21 when when that uh, that that was meant to be my big I, I you know as a as a young kid you had this sort of ambition that you were going to make the next Sam Raimi Evil Dead, and um and we went out to make a horror film out in outback South Australia and it collapsed like a house of cards everything that could go wrong did go wrong on that set, and so it's a real sort of trial and error kind of uh, doco for anyone who who is into seeing someone fail <laughs> um I, I i guess again like uh well don't, don't show mother was actually my university uh honors film uh so so when i was at film school i did honors and i said look i'd like to make a, a low budget uh feature and and then originally in that in that case scenario i said i'd like to do a horror film please and the university said well We'll let you do a dark movie that's a drama, but we won't let you do a full out horror. So, <laughs> so Don't Show Mother is the result of that. Um, the Nullable Nymph is a very sort of similar situation to Stuffings where I was, um, it was sort of about the surroundings of where I was living. In, I lived in Sejuna for a while and, and I knew of the Nullable Nymph through my grandfather. And I just thought, why hasn't anyone touched this? So um, that's kind of how the Nullable Nymph came to be. And it was a very similar situation where there was no crew or cast on that that, that I knew. I, everyone was sort of brought in and it was all hands on deck. Um, and Colourful and Impossible is kind of my first sort of international movie because we shot half of that in Japan. Um, I suppose, again, it was very low budget, but it was, I suppose it was sort of our kind of semi-James Bond economic thriller type movie. Um, so a lot of the time when I guess picking the movie, it's always sort of been a little bit environmental. It's been a little bit of like just what's at my disposal, um, which is not exactly how I always want to go about it, but it, it definitely plays a big part because I think you're going by, again, if you've got no money, what's what's in your reach? What's what's available to be made without having to, you know, pull huge strings and 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 open your wallet and and dump it out and <laughs> and run a tab sort of thing. So, yeah, that that's kind of how my films get made. Okay. <laughs> and tell me about a, a credit I noticed for you somewhere in Tonga. Right. Um. Yeah. So I mean, I I went to Tonga. Uh, oh gosh, was that twenty sixteen or seventeen or something like that? Um, I was the first assistant direct, a uh, second assistant director on um, that film which was a German um, production. And it was apparently, apparently it's the first ever feature film that was shot in Tonga. Um, and I've never seen the end result. I have to admit, I've never been able to find that film to watch because obviously it's streamed in Germany and, um, and, and we can't access it here in Australia. Um, but I was just, I just have friends who obviously live in Germany and, and um, when they were going to Tonga to make this movie, they said, we need an Australian. So they, they called me and they said, would you be the Australian who, who communicates between the Tongans and the Germans? And that was really interesting because obviously 
the Germans are very efficient. They, they, it's very, you know, by the clock, by the numbers. And of course, you're talking about people that don't go by the clock. It's like island time and send the Australian in to sort it out. They'll, 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 <laughs> they'll find the middle ground. So that was a really good experience, actually. I, I did enjoy myself on that set. And obviously, you, you're shooting in paradise. You, 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 it's, like, it's like being on Castaway or something like that. It was, it, that was a really good experience. So, um, yeah, yeah, that's, that's somewhere in Tonga. If I can find it, if anyone can find it, I'd love to watch it. <laughs> oh, well, I have lots of German connections. I must see if I can uh, find it as well. <laughs> I just noticed the background. I... <laughs> <laughs> that's right. <laughs> Welcome to Berlin. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> What am I on about? <laughs> oh, very good, very good. Okay, so Matthew, are you planning uh, other films at the moment? Yes, I've, I've got a film actually, we're shooting another film actually in about a month's time uh, called Audition Tape 13. And that's, talking about dark horror, that's going a little bit back towards that. Um, I, I think Audition Tape 13 really is playing on the indie scene of of casting a bit like we, we we've been talking where you put your name forward for whether you're a, a crew member or, a, or a, an actor um you go onto these projects really just trusting that that you're going to be looked after and and the, the film experience is going to be good and just talking i suppose with with local actors there's a lot of horror stories there there's a lot of whether you walk onto a set and it's not a good set for like the, just that the end product isn't good, but then there's some personalities in there that can really, you know, you, you just, you just don't know really what you're walking into. And because it's never policed, I suppose, you know, it's, 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 it's an industry that's a tricky one because you sort of get away with a few things here and there when you're making a film. Uh, and I think there sometimes that people's uh, personalities think they can get away with a lot more. And so there's, uh, it's kind of a, uh, you know, a tale of, again, be careful what you audition for or, or be careful what you walk in on. Uh, so it's, it's going gonna, it's gonna, to uh, have an even lower budget than stuffings, but it's all sort of set in one location, that film. So we're really um, putting our money into the production design for the setting more than anything. Um, so that's, that's the film that we're working on in January. And I've got another script in the works at the moment. I can't say too much because it's all chitter chatter, but um, it's a werewolf movie of all things. Uh, and I seem to, have, someone approached me on this one. I seem to have got the uh, monster, go to the guy that makes monster movies. So, <laughs> And so um, I'm working on potentially a, a werewolf film after that. So that will, uh, that'll, it'll bring it back to the, the, the nicer B gradey stuff. Okay. Look forward to seeing both of those. They sound really intriguing. <laughs> Very oh, thank, you. <laughs> and thank you. Just to conclude, last question I love asking all filmmakers, have you seen anything mm -hmm. else of late, film, television, streaming, whatever, that has impressed you? Oh, um, that's impressed me recently. Look, well, the last thing I just saw at the cinema was the James Bond movie, actually. Oh. <laughs> so that's what's really on my mind because I've just seen that, which... Um, was interesting, I guess. <laughs> I don't know really where that one sat with me, to be quite honest. Um, what have I watched lately? Um, oh, gosh. It's, that's a really tough question, actually. I, I find it interesting with streaming stuff because um, there seems to be a very, you know, very formulatic sort of way they go about it with certain things. Um, Although someone did show me just recently uh, Palm Springs, which was obviously that film, um, Andy Samberg, and um, obviously it's like the Groundhog Day kind of redone, but I like I liked that because it was two people in a time loop. Uh, and so that did impress me. Like I had a better time watching Palm Springs than I thought I ever would. So that that's kind of just recently, that's all that can kind of come to mind. But um yeah, there's, there's a lot of catching up on films I actually have to do. I have to admit that. <laughs> okay, no, that's fair enough. Look, Matthew, congratulations on Stuffings. Um, we've been speaking to Matthew J. Wilkinson, the director of Stuffings, which is now available on various streaming platforms. Uh, and uh, thanks so much, Matthew, for talking with me. Not a problem. Thank you so much.
All the best. Bye-bye. Thank you. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>